panel and then I can flip it over and just trace around it and cut out the opposite side panel and that's all there is to making the side panels of the dinghy and I'm just using a drywaller as T-square and I'll just go along and make a line vertical line doesn't have to go any more than halfway up or so more than enough. Of course I'm drawing on plywood so you want to have plenty of pencils because they get dull very quickly. And if you keep your pencil sharp, your lines will be thin and they'll be more accurate uh, when you're making the marks for your dimensions. Okay, every 12 inches, you have a vertical line. Now I'll reference the plans and I'll find out where I have to measure up and make a mark. And then from there I'll be able to go ahead and uh, draw in the lines. So I won't do all this on camera because uh, this will take me a while. But it says here measure up three and a quarter inches and I will do that on the first one this is for marking the chine, the bottom of the panel three and a quarter inches and I make a little tick mark uh, next one says three and an ace Make a tick mark. Next one is also three and an ace. And so I'm going to do this the whole way across. I'm also going to do the tick marks for the top of the panel. I'll do that across and then I'll be I'll come back and I'll show you how I match all the lines up. I've made all the measurements and the top line which is also known as the shear uh, of the side panel in this case happens to be a straight line all the way across so that was pretty easy to do but in in most cases in a lot of my designs it'll be a bit of a curve. There is a curve uh, at the chine though which is the bottom of the side panel and what I've done is I've taken a batten and all the batten is in this case this is just a piece of 2x4 uh, uh, that was uh, uh, ripped down uh, into a small thin piece of wood that can bend but it's still stiff enough to hold the curve and, uh, and what I did is I, I put little nails on either side of the batten to hold it against the marks that I made earlier uh, from the measurements I took from the plans. Now this lays out a curve and right along I'm going to connect I'm connecting all the marks that I made with a pencil along the batten and I have a fair curve and what's going to happen it's going to look a little bit weird before you cut out the side panel and that's because the side panel is laying flat but when the side panel is wrapped around the frame forming the shape of the boat then this bottom curvature will start to make sense. It'll pull in and make a nice line in the way you would normally see a boat. So I'm just tracing a line along here, along this batten. And also notice that the nails are on either side of the batten. You never put a nail through the batten and you never clamp the batten down because 
That'll uh, hold the batten stiff and it won't be able to take the proper shape and give you a fair curve. And so that's why I'm doing it this way. Once you have the line drawn, and I have all my other lines drawn, I drew my line here for the bow. Uh, this line here is for the stern. I just took the measurements right off the plan. Basically all you're doing here is you're taking the plans that show you a sheet of plywood in scale size and you're taking that drawing and you're just drawing it full size on the sheet of plywood, on the regular sheet of plywood. And this is, uh, in this case, this particular boat design uh, only calls for quarter inch plywood for the sides. And see, all I, these nails aren't in very, very tough. You can pull them right out and I can take this batten off easily. And those lines, those holes will pretty much disappear. Uh, when I'm cutting out the panel, any holes on either side of the batten will be filled in later with some epoxy resin when I'm finishing the boat and I'm putting a little fiberglass over the seams. So that'll all be filled in and that won't be exposed. So now, you may not be able to see it on the camera, but I do have one side panel fully drawn out, full size, and when I cut this out, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to reverse it and trace it. And the reason for that is the plywood has one good side and one not so good side. And I want two opposite sides, the outsides of the boat to be the good sides and the insides to be the not so good side, if that makes any sense. So if I flip it over and reverse it, I'll have two outside panels with good sides on them. And so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up this. I'll shut off the camera take all this stuff off and then I'll be ready to cut out this side panel. And before you cut the side panel out, look at the drawings and make sure you mark, put a mark on the side panel. This uh, little line here is where the uh, mainframe is going, to, you're going to align the mainframe when you're putting the boat together. And so it's crucial you have that line in there. So I'm just going to put this plywood on here. I set the blade just below the depth of the plywood so it will cut into that rack a little bit, and uh, which is fine. I don't want to set, I'm using a, a, uh, a small circular saw that's only six inches in diameter, and I'm using just a, a, a general uh, contractor blade, combination blade, which is all you need. And that will cut curves, uh, you know, they're not very tight curves and it's not very thick plywood. You don't want to use a plywood blade because that just get, it overheats and it doesn't cut very well when you're trying to do curves. But just setting the blade just below the plywood, you can cut curves all day long. And I'm going to freehand this, uh, this side panel when I do cut it. I have one side panel cut out. And all I have to do now is just reverse this. I'll clamp it up and I'll trace it out and cut the other side out. I have the second side panel laid out and uh, this is going to represent the opposite uh, side panel and this is the outside. And then once this is cut out, the two will be clamped together and We'll just take a block plane and match up all the edges so that they'll be exactly the same. They'll be perfectly matching. Okay. I have two side panels, which are pretty much close to matching. There's not too much I have to do to match them up and get them together. Just a little bit of trim with the block plane. And what I'll do is I'll just clamp them up. I have my marks here for where the mainframe is going to be located. And uh, that's where the stem goes up there. That's the pointy end of the boat. This is the stern. That's the broad end. And uh, so here are side panels. These are the two inside faces. These are the two inside inside faces of the panels, outboard side. 
I'm going to put them together and match them as close as I can. I want the side panels to have matching edges all the way around so that it, it doesn't matter if the dimensions themselves might be a little off. The, the, uh, the big importance is having all of these edges be exactly the same all the way around. And the reason for that is because when I'm putting this together uh, many times, especially in this case I'm on an uneven surface, and by knowing that both sides are mirror images in their exact, exact same shape in the exact same place, it helps me with uh, alignment. And so my alignment of the pieces with respect to the stem and the mainframe and the transom as I put it together uh, makes for uh, a much better boat. It won't be all racked, it won't look weird, everything will be proportional uh, because I have these reference points. And so that's why I want to trim this up and make the sides exactly the same. I'm just going to take and I'm going to put a screw through each end and this is okay because uh, when the boat goes together the transom is going to be joined here and you're going to have screws going through the panel anyway. Same thing at the stem. So just one at each end is good. You can see there's a little bit of unevenness and I just want to make sure that both panels are even together. I have a very inexpensive little Stanley block plane and you can just take that block plane and just keep working it like this and go up and down the panel just all the way around until you have them reasonably matched. They're, they're pretty much the same, both uh, surfaces. And right now I've got one surface taller than the other so that I'm, I'm taking it down to match the other one. But this is necessary, as I said, for proper alignment. So you just keep working it and uh, I'll come back once I've finished. I have taken the uh, one side panel, it doesn't matter which side you begin with, and this is the bow, and I've taken the, the stem, and I've fastened it, the, uh, the side panel, right to the stem, and uh, as you can see it goes right along the forward edge of the stem, I've got it all aligned, and I pre-drilled and I put screws in, but I don't have any glue in yet. You also notice that I let the stem protrude top and bottom. That'll be trimmed off later. Um, now right now what I'm doing is now that I have this in place where I want it and I want to make sure the other side is aligned, this is how I do it. I take a pencil, make a line along the side panel against the stem on each side. Now, I can remove this side panel, just take these screws out, and when I go to put it back together again, this will align perfectly in place where it's supposed to be. Well, during the last taping, I was uh, showing everybody how I fit the two side panels and make sure that they come out even on the stem on both sides. And unfortunately, the little card in my camera ran out of memory and I didn't realize it, so we missed that part. But essentially, when one side panel, you finally have that joined, that actually came out. Uh, what I do is, and I have my lines marked, okay, I can take these lines and align a square across the back side of the stem and draw another line. And I'll basically take my bevel gauge and what I'll do is I'll align the bevel gauge right here I'll align the bevel gauge with the stem and a side panel and then what I'll do is I will take that I will move it to the other side of the stem align it with the line that I drew straight across the square and draw another line right here it's going to be the exact opposite uh, on the other side of the stem and I do the same thing at the bottom and then when I take the other side panel it'll align perfectly and as long as I make sure the bow uh, part of the, the uh, panel is aligned uh, parallel right at the very edge of the stem just like the other one and uh, then I'll have two side panels that are aligned with the stem 
and they won't be racked and uh, they'll be nice and even. And then I go ahead and I fit the other side. Everything is pre-drilled, I put screws in, but it's all dry fit, there's absolutely no glue. Um, you'll find out why later, if we do have to make adjustments we can do that. Um, once this is all done, we'll take everything apart, we'll clean up any chips from the drilling and countersinking, and then we'll go ahead and apply glue and then we'll assemble for good. So the next step, we're going to uh, install the mainframe, and uh, the mainframe will be fit in pretty much the same manner as this. I'm just aligning the mainframe with the alignment marks I made on the side panels right from the plans when I originally drew out the panels. And, uh, and we're dry fitting everything because if we do have to make an adjustment, if something looks a little racked, we can do it before we commit to any kind of epoxy or other type of glue. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?